Look at that hammer. The, you know, the key to this is uh, you got to come in with the incoming tide. The outgoing tide starts going hard all day, and it, it messes up everything. The water's dirty. So I said, let me get up early and catch this tide right at the top. And this is what I'm getting right here. Stay tuned. And that water's not clean by any means, but it's it's still better than that outgoing tide. And it's, it's neutral right now, but it's getting ready to go out. So I had to come out early, and I'm getting on these hammers. So... Uh, that's the tip. I'm going to tip of the week. I'm going to tell you on a little bit when we finish up this video. Man, look at these hammers I'm catching. Huh? I changed my strategy. I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. Look at these hammers, man. Beautiful fish. They're there. They just, they're not down that outgoing tide. It brings in that dirty water and and, and, and the tide's been going out all day. So you got to get out when that tide's at the top or coming in. If it's coming in at night, wherever your favorite spot is, it, it, I think it's got to be incoming tide right now. That's the ticket is the, is the incoming tide. That's pretty good. That's the smallest one I got yet. Smallest one yet. Time it down, baby. Now, this is just a dislocation. Things could be different where you're fishing, the marsh or whatever, but like, this is another tip. Part of the tip I want to give y'all the week is when that tide switches, like it just switched. I was catching fish pretty much every cast on it. On a steel tide. I should have came out here a little earlier, but you see how it's pulling hard going out right here? And that's anywhere. It could be a sand dollar rock, any one of these rocks. Uh, you got to switch that pogey and hook him through the head. Because our croaker, if you're using a croaker, you got to hook him through the head. I've caught a few now going tight, but not like I was catching on the incoming tide. So uh, I'll be back and finish up the, the tip of the week uh, with talking about that, that tide. You got to look at that tide chart. I'm going to try to get out of this wind right here. So it's not, the wind doesn't make too much noise. But, okay, my... My basic, my tip of the week is the top three things that's most important in saltwater fishing is wind, current, which is tide, and the bait, of course, which I have the best bait this morning, and that's why I caught some hammers. But uh, the tide switched on me at about 7.30, 8 o'clock, so I only had about 40 minutes of slack tide. If I got out here a little bit earlier, which is hard to catch the pogies early at daybreak, so I gotta, you know, I gotta wait for the pogies because that's what I use. But Hook them through the mouth when that tide goes out and try that. And, then, and, and you know what? This week, when the tide starts rushing out hard like that, look at the tide chart and see how hard it falls. When you see it falling hard like that and you fish around passes like me, you plan your trip on an incoming tide where you have time in the morning to fish an incoming tide. The tide's going out all, all day until like 5 o'clock. So that sucks, to be honest for me. I'm lucky I got what I got today. I got some nice hammers, but I got here right before the tide switched and started blowing out of here. It's rolling hard out of here. And it's rough, it's been rough. So the water's been dirty and it's taking that bay water with that, with that dirty and bringing it out into the Gulf. So you want that incoming green tide at the top of the tide or right before the top of the tide. That's, that's the way I like to fish Grand Isle. So that's the tip of the week. When that outgoing tide is blowing out all day, you don't need to go fishing unless you just want to enjoy the, the day. See you next time. Tommy V, Grand Isle, Louisiana. Look at that beautiful trout I just caught. Can you believe that's on the outgoing tide? I don't catch many on the outgoing tide. If I can flip that boat in here. Whoa, boy. <laughs> I didn't reel up enough. That's what happens when you're on a solo trip right here, huh? Reel up a little more. barely hooked too. Look at how beautiful that fish is. They say that's what I'm saying. That when you're fishing with a pogey, you can't get that pogey down deep. So they got to come up and get it. And it's pretty deep right here at the jetties. So they got to come up and get that thing. So shrimp might be different, but croaker and the pogey. Croaker goes down kind of too, a little more. But pogies, it's a little difficult when you got a strong tide like that going out. I made a little move and and uh, it paid Look off. Look at this big one on camera right here. Look at this. Look at this fish, huh? Oh my God. Look at that big old trout. That's a big trout. That's about five pounds, maybe five and a half. Beautiful fish, huh? I'm going to release it. I just wanted y'all to show, show y'all that big old hammer I just caught. <laughs> I had to come back on and show y'all this because, you know, this happens sometimes at coming out of rocks, coming out of pass. The, the tide is going so strong on the out, and then we got a, a like a south wind is pushing that tide back around and it's coming over the rocks like it's an incoming tide right here 
and I started smoking them again as soon as the tide <laughs> came back in. So it's, it's coming in right here, but it's really going out hard. And so just keep that in mind. If you ever see that happen when you're here, that seems like that's the best bite when that tide's coming over those rocks towards the uh, channel. Well, that was an awesome trip. The last couple days, the Lord had me humble. I only had a few fish here, and that's why I didn't do, do, didn't do any kind of videos. It was tough, tough. But I guess right before this full moon, uh, I always like the, the, the five days before full moon, it seems like the, the fish bite. And uh, I had to come a little early for a change, and it worked. So time to be in Grand Isle, Louisiana. I got a box full of hammers. Y'all saw that big one I released. And then I got some three pounders in there. I probably got 20. My self-imposed limit, I didn't even count them, but I'm close, so I got the heck out of there. And this guy pulled up with his anchor and his motor and ran right over my spot, so that's the thing you don't do. I didn't put him on video because he was an old guy, but I started to. Don't do that to nobody. Run your motor right where they're fishing at and throw an anchor. Buy your trolling motor. If you can't afford one, let the wind glide you into your spot. That's my next tip of the week. Don't run your gas engine right on top of where you're gonna be fishing. See you next time.